Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials, and in today's video, I am going to share with you a fun story about dragging warthogs to the vineyard. Here we go. Now, I know everybody's probably wondering if you haven't looked it up already, what are you talking about? What is a warthog? Well, let me start with what a warthog is, and we'll get to the dragging and the vineyard part in just a little bit. Okay, a warthog is the endearment that pilots in the Air Force who fly them and those who don't call the A-10 Thunderbolt II close air support aircraft. Now to tell you a little bit more details about this aircraft, I looked it up on bard.google.com and I took their answer and I pasted it into a Word document and I had Word read it out loud because my eyes are going downhill because I'm just getting old. I had them do it out loud because I don't trust myself to be able to read it. Here's that reading. Here are some interesting facts and anecdotes about the A-10 Warthog aircraft. The A-10 Warthog is a twin engine, single seat jet aircraft that was specifically designed for close air support, CAS, of ground forces. It is known for its ruggedness, its powerful 30mm GEU-8 Avenger cannon, and its ability to operate in adverse weather conditions. The A-10 Warthog has been used in combat in every major U.S. conflict since it was first introduced in the early 1970s. It has flown over 70,000 combat sorties and has destroyed or damaged over 900 tanks, 2,000 other military vehicles, and 1,200 artillery pieces. The A-10 Warthog is the only U.S. Air Force aircraft that is dedicated to CAS. It is a highly specialized aircraft that is designed to provide close support to ground troops in a variety of scenarios. The A-10 Warthog is known for its survivability. It has a titanium bathtub that protects the pilot from ground fire, and it can continue to fly even if it loses an engine or a wing. The A-10 Warthog is a beloved aircraft by ground troops. It is often called the close air support angel by the soldiers who rely on its protection. Here are some additional anecdotes about the A-10 Warthog. During the Gulf War, a single A-10 Warthog destroyed a column of 23 Iraqi tanks in the span of three minutes. In Afghanistan, an A-10 Warthog was called in to provide close air support to a group of soldiers who were under heavy fire from Taliban fighters. The A-10 Warthog flew through a hail of bullets to reach the soldiers and was able to suppress the enemy fire, allowing the soldiers to withdraw to safety. In Iraq, an A-10 Warthog was used to destroy a bridge that was being used by ISIS fighters to transport weapons and supplies. The destruction of the bridge cut off a major supply line for ISIS and helped to disrupt their operations. The A-10 Warthog is a true warhorse of the skies. It is a rugged, reliable, and effective aircraft that has saved the lives of countless soldiers. It is a testament to the ingenuity and dedication of the American people that we have built such a powerful and versatile aircraft. Now you've had that little bit of orientation to it, let me tell you a little bit about what I have heard from my association with A-10 pilots in the Air Force. Back in the early 1980s, I lived in uh, Columbus, Mississippi, and my next door neighbor had come to Columbus to the Air Force Base there from flying the A-10 Warthog. And we had a lot of interesting conversations and some of the things he told me was, well, just like in the reading you just heard, the aircraft has a titanium bathtub where the pilot sits in there. And this titanium bathtub is designed to be very resistant to small arms fire so that some person on the ground with an AK-47 shooting up in the air at the aircraft is not going to have that bullet penetrate the aircraft and injure the pilot. And it does a very good job of this. But because of this, when I lived in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, especially among the pilot community there, we had a joke that we would tell about the A-10 aircraft. Pilots understand this better because they are familiar with the A-10 and they're familiar with what a flight simulator is. And the joke went like this. It says, hey, did you hear? We got this new A-10 simulator right here on Maxwell Air Force Base. And they look at you and they say, Hey, this is Maxwell Air Force Base. We don't have A-10s here. Why do we have an A-10 simulator? And you say, oh, it's, it's that dumpster over behind the building there. They just put a chair inside of it and people throw rocks at it. 
That's probably a lot more funny joke to pilots who understand what the A-10 is and the fact that it's very much subject to small arm fire from the ground. Now, as a close air support aircraft, it is designed to be low and slow, carry a lot of ammunition, a lot of ordnance, but basically what my neighbor told me is that the A-10 aircraft, what it is really, it's a gun with an aircraft built around it. And that's exactly what it is. The gun has seven barrels. They're offset to the left of the center line. And this is so they can fit the nose gear into the front of the aircraft, which is offset to the right of the center line. And that way they can have room for the nose gear and the gun. And this gun is 30 millimeters, as it said in that reading. But if you think about it, that's more than an inch in diameter. And the bullets in that gun are about the size of a quarter pound hot dog and they weigh a pound and a half each. They're made out of depleted uranium. And my friend who flew these aircraft said that when this aircraft is in a very steep dive, now you can imagine an aircraft in a dive, it's going downhill. It's going to pick up a lot of airspeed. And he says when you're going downhill at full throttle, so if you're going in a dive at full throttle, man, that thing ought to really be accelerating, right? Right? And if you're firing this gun, the aircraft, because of the recoil of the gun, will lose one and one half knots per second of airspeed. That's a lot of recall. Now, the usage of the gun is usually limited to between one and one and a half seconds, like this. That way they don't use up their bullets very much. <laughs> Thinking of them as bullets is almost a misnomer. They're ammunition. They don't use it up very quickly and they don't lose too much airspeed. That's pretty much the story of what that A-10 is all about. And you can look up more about it online and find out probably more than you ever wanted to know. But I wanted to share with you this one last story about it. When I was stationed up in Maine with the Air Force and I was flying KC-135s, we had one assignment where we went over to Europe and the Middle East for about three weeks. And when we were scheduled to come home, we got orders that said, hey, we've got a formation, a flight of A-10s in the Azores and we need you to escort them back to the coast of the United States. Oh, sure, no problem. Now, when you stop and think about it, the A-10 is a single seat aircraft. It doesn't have the range to get from across the other side of the pond over to this side of the pond without running out of fuel. So having a tanker, which is designed for air-to-air -air refueling, accompany them, especially considering the fact that the tanker has a navigator on board and a lot of good navigation equipment, it's just a good idea to have these A-10s fly back across the Atlantic Ocean in the company of a tanker. So that's what we did. We landed in the Azores and we got off and went around. We loaded up on, I think, uh, Matus wine and put that in the aircraft to bring that home. And when it was time to take off, we let the ATMs take off first. There was a flight of eight of them. We let them take off first because, as I said, they're low and slow. Now, our normal refueling altitude is somewhere between 31 and 33,000 feet. But because these were A-10s, we had to fly at 27,000 feet and we had to go down to 25,000 feet to refuel just because the air is a little bit more dense there. And this is where the A-10s were designed to fly at that altitude and below, not much above it at all. So when we took off, we had to have enough fuel on board for us to get back across the ocean and get home. And we had to have enough fuel to refuel each of these aircraft twice during this trip across the ocean. That means we were pretty heavy when we take off. Now, as you can probably imagine, when an aircraft is heavy, it needs to usually fly a lot faster. So we were able to fly at a speed that was compatible with the A-10s flying in formation with us. Uh, but it was when it was time to refuel, the A-10s need to have enough reserve speed so that if they fall behind, they've got some power left that they can catch up and join on the boom. So we had to slow way down. And because at that first refueling, we were still very heavy, we had to fly so slow that 
in order to keep from being in danger of stalling or flying so slow that we fell out of the sky, we had to put down about 20 degrees of flaps. And this is one of the few times we have had to put our flaps down to refuel other aircraft. But that worked out just fine. And we had all eight of these A-10 aircraft cycle through on the boom and fill up and they were all fine, fat, dumb and happy. And we proceeded another third of the way across the ocean and then they cycled onto the boom one more time. Actually, we were most of the way across the ocean because they had to go home once we hit the coast of the United States. And we cycled them through a second time and they got all filled up and they were good to go all the way home. Now, one of the things you have to understand is the tanker aircraft, it's basically a Boeing 707 modified for military service. It's a big airplane. All of the fuel tanks are in the wings and underneath the floor of the aircraft. We can get up and we can walk around all day long inside that aircraft. There's a latrine inside. There's a galley inside where we can uh, store hot coffee and fix meals if they're given to us by the in-flight kitchen. So it's really quite a comfortable aircraft to take a long flight in because you're not pinned in that one seat in one position for a long period of time. A-10 aircraft pilots, on the other hand, usually don't have long sorties. They usually at most are an hour, maybe two hours at the very most. This was a long flight and these poor A-10 pilots, here they are strapped into this single seat cockpit. They can't get up. They can barely even move other than to just move their controls and their rudder pedals. So they're strapped in this. Now pilots love to tease each other. One of the ways that we tease these A-10 pilots is a little bit of a passive aggressive thumb in the ribs joking is uh, they then pull up beside the cockpit and we would be waving to them and we talked to them on the radio too and just you know how you guys doing and, and where's your home base blah 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 and we're out in the middle of the ocean nobody else can hear us so we're a little bit more lax with radio discipline but one of the things we did to tease them we would hold up our cup of coffee and we'd kind of salute them with a cup of coffee and take a drink and, and just smile and of course they had their helmet on and their eye shield down the sun visor part of the shield and they had on their oxygen mask because that's just the way they fly and when we would do that they would kind of go you could inside the helmet you couldn't see through it but you could imagine they were rolling their eyes I mean, yeah, thanks a lot guy but this is just one of the ways we tease them well we finished that trip and we got all the way to Martha's Vineyard right off the coast of Massachusetts and they were now in range of the on ground navigational aids and they could pick it up on their radios and they could peel off and go back to their base and I think it was South Carolina and we were able to peel off and go north up to our base up in Maine and that was the end of that story but it was just a, a fun thing to share with you and I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up. Let me and let the YouTube robots know that you thought it was a nice video and so they will recommend it to other people. Also, click that share button and share this video with other people you know might enjoy hearing this little story. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not, why not go ahead right now and click that subscribe button and then the bell icon and YouTube will let you know by email when I post another great video right here on David's Tutorials and Vlog Channel. Meantime, everybody, have a wonderful day. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.